I'm going to um, to kind of lead off our session uh, with uh, with the land acknowledgement. Uh, uh, here at OCAD, um, we you know uh, we acknowledge that we are situated on the ancestral and uh, traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron Wendat, who are the original owners and custodians of the land uh, on which we sit that we sit and create. Our guest today, um, his. Um, Who's wonderfully agreed to um, to share um, to share their work and uh, with, uh, with us here is um, Patricio Gonzalez. Who, he's an artist with an experimental tinkering based practice inspired by the mechanics and aesthetics of mapping instruments, including star maps, compasses, telescopes, and satellites. Tool making is central to his art practice as a way to spread ideas and give back to his community. His book of shaders has taught uh, an entire generation of artists. Um, the book's been used for countless workshops, inspired several other projects, and, and he um, is uh, currently working uh, with um, uh, at a soft, uh, with a company that produces a wonderful software trail called uh, called Learn Learning uh, ML. Uh, I am going to uh, warmly welcome uh, Patricio to talk with us today. Thank you, thank you so much, Nicole. Uh, Cindy for that introduction. And also um, thank you to Nicole Vela for making the connection. And in that lineage, also thank you to Jeremy Rothstein, which introduced me to uh, Nicole. So um, a lot of thank yous. <laughs> it's like a skate of thank yous. Um, and also thank you for that. I'm gonna turn on my, the, my screen, I guess. Uh, share, let's see. Can you see? Can you see my screen? No, you can yes. see my. I can okay. see. I can see the slide navigator. Oh, wrong screen. Uh, how you switch that? Uh, if I come to this one, no. Hmm. I guess I'm gonna share the other screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stop sharing. Share again. Share the big screen. Uh, now we're here. What about that? Hola. Oops, Cindy? Um, still, I'm still not seeing the slide navigator. You still see the slide navigator? Okay. Uh, stop sharing. Okay. I, I think I figured out. So now you see the big screen. What about that? Perfect. Yay, we made we've it. Ar we've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> this is the testing that we probably should have done beforehand. Yeah. Instead, we started chatting. Um, again, I stand by our choice. Yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> we did a great job. Um, so um, in today, um, I was, um, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. I, I'm gonna be talking about um, my current job in runway and um, particularly my role is in the is where ML meets computer graphics. Um, a super brief introduction of me. Uh, my name is Patricio Gonzalez Vivo. Um, I'm an artist and also I develop some tools. Um, one of them is Chilas of Viewer, um, Pixel Spirit, the Book of Shaders. And currently I'm very and kind of like having a great time uh, working on Lydia, which is a library for shaders. Um, and a lot of them, uh, it has a big repository also of like filters and a lot of the, the, that is work is kind of like a funnel into my work in Runway. Um, uh, in this side, as my art practice, I have been doing upcycle art displays with old screens that I found and I uh, modify um, and I get uh, to show my artwork. Um, but we're here to talk about Runaway. Um, I joined the team like one year ago, um, almost exactly one year and a couple of weeks. Um, and I think many of you know Runaway for um, the models that uh, you can run on it. And, um, and one of the things that really interests me about the company, and I was delighted uh, to join, was that the spirit of it is to empower artists uh, with state-of-the-art tools. Um, and 
And for me, that is kind of like a um, dream come true in terms of work because I can get to funnel the experience um, directly to the to an art community. Uh, so um, I made this transition to the to the company, and I'm very happy there. <laughs> Um, the thing is, I didn't know anything about machine learning, um, and also I figured out that it would be a great opportunity to learn about that. Um, by the moment uh, I joined, my idea of machine learning was mostly this wonderful kind of work that people uh, were doing, like Netrice, um, using uh, existing mod models like Stanga, 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 uh, or Mario, or Derek. Tools. Um, and um, what I found fascinating about what people artists were doing with machine learning is that uh, they seem to engage in some sort of like collaboration with the machine, like uh, machine learning as mostly as a black box where you can uh, curate what you fit into it and then what it comes out of it. Um, and um, I think. Nowadays with mid journey, we, we have more experience in that and, and it's something that is not just for like um, um, uh, small um, adventurous artists that decide to uh, get into the travel, but this is this kind of tools. I, I am very excited that everybody that, every time that pops out because it really democratize and everybody has the experience of working uh, kind of with a machine. Um, Su Wen was one of the first artists. She's, she's, she was raised in, in Canada um, that I saw kind of like talking uh, about this kind of collaboration, like working with the computer, uh, with AI. Um, and for me, it's, it's very hard to think uh, on these workflows where with a human in the middle um, uh, without thinking on her and, and her robots. Um, her artwork is fantastic. And I think it's very thoughtful about um, kind of this, this process. Um, but going back to Runaway, when I joined, um, and you, you will be asking, <laughs> kidding in you what to do uh, about AI, um, why, why he joined Runaway? Well, one year ago, uh, a little more than one year ago, uh, Runway was doing this transition of like, okay, let's we're 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 growing up, we're making a transition, we want to expand uh, AI to a bigger audience, uh, and they saw this opportunity around video edit editing. So um, the current project became a video editor. So this is the teaser. <laughs> um, I'm gonna lower the volume. If I can. So now Runway um, is a video editor that happens on, and runs completely on the webs and of, of the of the web browser. Um, that alone is very is, is kind of like new and uh, a big task to, to take. Uh, but Runway being Runway and focused so much in ML. Part of the idea also was to uh, make uh, magic tools, so like make things very easy uh, in terms of like one click distance to um, to use AI to automate things that usually are very daunting. The first product of that, I, I think, it just pop. Uh, it was um, um, it was green screen, a huge success, and. From there, we have been introducing new um, kind of like products or features also uh, using the power of AI. Um, so in painting is one. So you get the idea, right? Um, uh, all of, of all of these we have seen in different ways. I can tell you a little bit of what is new uh, is the fact that this works on video. Like uh, it's very it's these kind of tools uh, for static images. Um, there is that other people doing the same thing, but for videos, it's new. In a in a browser, it's kind of new, and 
uh, with this level of quality and simplicity in the applications. Um, and for that, we, as a team, we're very proud of it. Um, now we are introducing new tools regarding to audio. So you get it, you, you click and it removes the noise. Um, and the same with uh, automatic subtitles. Anyway, that was, that was kind of like a super quick um, uh, description. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm, it's, it's hard to hear my audio. Okay, um, you cannot hear any audio or the audio of the screen of the videos. The video audio, we weren't we weren't even. Oh, okay, that is kind of better. <laughs> uh, I guess the only the, the only one that you miss is the one of, with the noise um, and the subtitles, the audio ones. Um, um, so this is the the team uh, behind it. Um, or most of the team, we, we are growing fast. Um, and um, well, um, sorry, I lost a little bit the, the track. Uh, the, there's a lot of things that I, I like. One, of, one is uh, uh, the diversity and uh, it's fully remote. And anyway, uh, it's a great team to, to work with. Um, and I think it was, it's good to put a face, especially for a um, AI <laughs> company. Um, let me go to the next one. So, computer graphics. Where's where do I fit in in this uh, pipeline? So, um, our, our in order to the, the magic happens, our service is kind of like has two sides, like the back end and the front end. Um, the back end is where is the powerhouse, is where we have our GPU servers, it's the part that does the exports, it's the part that applies the models. Um, while the front end is basically has to be fast, uh, it has to be snappy, it has to allow people to create, to be to jump in and be in the song. Um, so basically my, my sub or everything regarding to computer graphic has to be running correctly on both and the result, the result has to be consistent. Um, what is crucial about the front end is that performance is crucial, while in the back end, uh, quality is, it has to be, is, 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 um, is the goal, is the focus. So um, when I enter, I was, uh, the, the need specifically for my position was uh, real-time effects, um, but I had exp experience working before with AR engines in uh, mixed reality uh, in Oculus. Um, and uh, I, I saw an opportunity to kind of like making from the ground up um, a more um, robust and flexible system. So with that in mind, um, I uh, started working and my little baby in the company is something called uh, multi-bands, which um, comes from it's a it's a it's a borrowed term from satellite uh, technology where you have these satellites that are essentially a camera and they have like different lenses that capture different bands of light. Um, and the idea behind it is that we receive RGB video, a regular RGB video, and through the power of machine learning, we can um, we can fork it and we can process it and derive new bands of information. Uh, this is cool. what do you mean? Uh, the, the, for example, depth estimation and optical flow. Um, that is done automa automatically every time that you upload something. And with that information, we can do new things. Um, and, um, and in this sense, it's not very different from the, um, the what we were talking about before of like, uh, still, there are still black boxes, but it's our um, 
is through how we architecture and how we mix the new products that we can derive from the machine learning, uh, where I, uh, we feel that um, innovation can happen. Um, and then we have segmentation bands, which are some, which are bands derived from some input that the user had on the video, M mostly the masks. Um, so you select a person, we complete and we propagate it to the borders, and from that mask, which what well, we can create an SDS mask, SDF mask, because that stands from sign distance field, or we can create an in painting mask, so something that we remove. That element from the scene. Um, so to recap and put it all together, we have the engine works a little bit like this. We have RGB, which is what the user uh, uploads. We derive this extra information with the mask, the flow, and the depth. And then it jumps into this kind of like the CG part of the engine that is in charge of mixing these products um, through what we call uh, um, operations uh, that I think the animation, yeah, there you go. So the interesting thing, at least for me, is that these um, operations can be uh, stuck one on top of the other one. So uh, we can take the RGB, do some modification to the RGB, for example, like color correction, and then we can do operations on the mask, for example, like uh, um, feathering the edges, or, and then we can mix it, mix them up. Uh, so and now I'm jumping to some of the, uh, ca the cases, uh, case studies. <laughs> so um, for example, we have this uh, video of this woman dancing. Uh, we derive the depth information from it. And then in combining these two uh, bands, we can create a, a depth of field effect. So depth of field is this um, effect. It's, uh, it's, it comes from photography uh, where something is in focus and everything else is out of focus and it's um, blur. Um, and usually these kind of things are like set in production, um, but reusing this um, treating through CG, through computer graphics, um, some information derived from uh, machine learning, we can uh, doing in post-production. Um, and optical flow, um, we derive, and for each one of the pixels, we can derive what is the velocity of the pixels. And we can do all sorts of things. Um, for example, we can um, do some sort of like decal and then move that along with the movement of the, of the video. So uh, this, is make it feel like things stick to the video. It's kind of, it's the same effects. Um, so there's some glitch art uh, called that, that data mosh. Um, it's kind of like a high frequency, high detail data moshing. Um, uh, what else? And then we can like combine it and do more crazy stuff, uh, which is probably mostly have fun. Uh, adding some fluid simulations and, um, or uh, doing fluid simulations and uh, color blending to create a uh, paint, liquid painting from that. Um, and, and in the same spirit, um, this is another exploration where I'm combining the that estimation with the optical flow. Um, and they, what I was I found interesting about this is that you can uh, kind of like project points, like a point cloud of the videos. But uh, I don't know if you have had an experience with that, but what usually when you work with a Kinect or like a um, LiDAR, um, the, the points are projected into the scene. But by using this combination of technology, the, the points can follow something. So, um, so they basically, they attach to the surface of something. Um, and that allows you to uh, improve the quality. So this is before that, and then it's, this is later. Um, and then, oh, and all this, um, we can keep doing this game of like using more derived data to improve the results. So in this case, what we are do doing is we're using the in-painted 
um, the invented layer to kind of like fill that uh, the space. So here, um, the technique is different at the point cloud. This is a rain marching scene. Um, and in the area where the dancer was, uh, we're filling the data with the impainted data. Um, we're gonna have a lot of uh, time for questions. So I'm happy to, to answer questions ab about this. Um, so how all this works? Um, and this is this is kind of like my th the thing that I, I like the most, which is called, they're called shaders. They're um, they are special like they're special programs that uh, run on the GPU. Uh, they work different like other programs. Uh, most pro language programs uh, they um, work. This is like a list of tasks that you have to that the computer has to uh, resolve sequentially. Uh, in the CPU, in the central processing unit. Um, you have uh, around, in your computer, probably you have between eight and 32 or something like that in uh, CPUs. Um, but the CPUs uh, are not great for very small tasks because they are designed as big, robust, very smart uh, kind of um, processing units that that's one thing Thing at a time, but it can be very complicated, right? Um, but the problem that graphics in general has is that they are very small tasks. They basically decide what color is each pixel on the screen. Uh, but with the screens that we have today, um, that involves like millions and millions of calculations um, and a frame like 30 times a second or 30, 60 times a second or 90 times a second. So uh, because these, even these small daunting tasks uh, can like really freeze a CPU. Uh, and this is all this that I'm explaining, it's not new. Um, and this is kind of like the origin of computer graphics. Um, uh, engineers way smarter than, than, than am I, that I am, um, they figure out that this was an architectural problem. And um, if, this kind of a small task uh, get resolved in parallel uh, by very little kind of like um, very simple uh, processor units, um, they can pass fast. So if we imagine those little, little uh, prob those little tasks as little like ping pong balls and the processor unit as like very simple uh, tubes, even like toilet paper tubes, you know, um, if you have a lot of them, all these all these all these uh, units can be processed all at once. If they all like just pass through like a trainer, like water through a trainer, um, and that's basically what shaders are. Shaders are little programs that run in one each one of these um, tubes that does something super simple, like choosing the color of, of a pixel. But the trick is that they do it in parallel. And there are some rules around that. For example, each tube doesn't know what the neighbor tube is doing, right? Um, so this is in a, in a very simplif oversimplified way, the essence of shaders. They are very powerful because they give you full uh, control on each pixel. They are very efficient because um, this architecture really uh, is designed for performance. Um, you have low level control, and, but you, you're very constrained in a lot of ways. Um, so basically the entire, um, and here's to like, so like putting back to my own practice, um, these shaders, these operations that we, are, we apply to this band are running in, uh, in each one in a, in a single shader. Um, then these shaders are, um, pretty much derived from GDSL Viewer, which is, uh, which is the same specs that I use for the book of shaders and for my tools. Um, and they're like little self-contained packages uh, that can be um, stuck one on top of the other one. I recently, and this is my cue that I can, um, I recently by Recently, I mean yesterday, we um, 
we uh, launch our new website. So if you're more interested in how this works, and this is something we can do here if people is interested, um, we have a new website for graphics at Runway. And um, the first article is exactly what I'm talking about right now. And we add little kind of like a snapshot, like a little sandbox of how that exactly, what is that? Um, and how our shaders work. So if you can hear um, in the first one that you will find is exactly how to do like a very simple, this is not a correct type of field, like the one that I was showing before is kind of like a very simplistic and um, um, but uh, allow us to do this kind of like um, uh, change where, where the focus we want to, to put. Um, and then we present the other, the other bands and things that you can do with it. Um, anyway, I'm just dropping this here uh, in case the Q&A got close uh, into this direction. Uh, back to the slides. Um, and this is to uh, wrap it up. Um, what's next? Well, there's there's a lot of things uh, that are happening and, and runway. We're very excited. I um, we are we are growing our product, and um, there's a lot of things to do. Especially if you want to have a fully featured uh, video editor. Um, but I can tell you what things are. I'm excited. I'm excited for automating things like camera tracking. Um, this is a project that I did for Johannes Kopf, um, where with depth estimation, it's a consistent camera tracking and allows you to, to do basically transform any video into a 3D video. Um, I'm excited about NERFs. Uh, NVIDIA recently um, released a new version of NERFs, which happens almost instant, instantly. Previous versions take like hours to do, to, to train a NERF uh, um, model. Um, and, and all this for me, what, what, the, the, what it really um, excites me is that this is, this um, put us in the direction for uh, virtual production, which is this new, uh, probably you have heard about virtual production regarding to the Mandalorian. Is this new way that um, IML um, is start developing and now it's becoming more and more popular where um, you, you use these like uh, screens and real-time engines to create the, en um, to create the environment and um, for those that this is new, this is very, this is kind of like revolutionary because before um, people make these videos and these green screens. Um, and the problem with the green screens is that then they, they project the light and everybody's kind of like looks a little green. And then in post-production, all the coloring has to be retouched. Um, virtual production, um, the kind of like, uh, wonderful thing that, that it brings is that uh, allows to, by using these big screens of LEDs, um, the lighting happen naturally. Those, those, these screens are like casting light on the people's faces, uh, not just putting some background uh, images, but also is taking care of the lighting. Um, that's why, you know, for example, you see this light, this, that, that panel on the, top, on the roof of, uh, because they are also interested on the light that is coming down. So um, it's not just a, a VFX trick of like putting things on the background and syncing the camera, but also resolve the lighting. And um, this is kind of like revolutionizing how the, the typical pipeline of a production of a movie works of like, you do the shots and then you send it to do the cuts and then like the video production, the, the VFX get added and the, it's, um, now uh, 3D artists and VFX artists are working on set on real time, modifying things with the command of the director. Um, and I think this is it's a very exciting uh, moment because this also um, means that you need less budget to have like great quality. So, um, and it's my hope that all this uh, kind of like um, development in the technology um, uh, allows creators from different parts to uh, to tell their own stories and ultimately um, 
uh, change the landscape of storytelling. Um, uh, before closing, I want to put this slide again about our team and say that we are hiring. Um, we, if you go to the graphics sites that I just said, graphics dot runwayml.com at the end it's all there you can find all the open positions also um, my dms are open yeah if you need some introduction um and all that said oh, i already said this and all that says uh said i uh, want to say thank you and give back the um microphone to cindy Hi. thanks Hi, that is so exciting, as you can see from like the giant smile on my face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, um, I, I wanted to open, um, open things up to questions because I know, I know folks would have them, but I'm going to use my, my role as a host to steal the first question, uh, which I, <laughs> I feel is my, my, hostly, my hostly right. Um, so um, so uh, my, um, a lot of the work that I'm doing right now is, is using volumetric video and trying to incorporate, you find better ways to incorporate volumetric video into inter interactive experiences like games and, and VR types of things. And so this is just for context. So the, um, so, and as, as you might know, um, having some, some work, some overlap between some of the depth separation stuff within, uh, within Runway. Um, I mean, one of the issues with volumetric video is that there's just, there's just so many, there's so many agencies at play. There's like the actual, like, Filming you have to do, and the equipment uh, sees the world in a particular sort of way, and you know it's not. You know, there's conditions that are good for video that aren't good for the depth cameras, and the depth cameras, you know, have problems seeing different sorts of things and, and whatnot. And um, machine learning has, you know, from the, even from examples that, that you know, you've, you've shown has 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 potentially been a way to help bridge some of those gaps between you know what we want to see and what the mistakes that the cameras make and, um, and, and all of those, those kinds of things. And, um, but, so this is a meandering question. Um, but one of the other things that, that excite, excites me about a tool like Runway is the possibility to just make that whole process more accessible with less, like, it just takes tons of time to refine all this stuff, right? And, one of the um, one of the cool things about looking at at these like integrated tools is it's just like if it's if you spend less time if it's if it's doing a lot of the work to help refine it then you can spend more time doing the creative part which is the part that everybody wants to to get to in the end right um, and I was wondering like what your what your thoughts were on that that balance between like what um, first of all from like a problem solving standpoint maybe like how do you, like how do you, how do you how do we approach these these challenges and figure out like what, like where, um, where machine learning, like if you're in, if, sorry, if you're if you're in like a partnership to solve these problems with AI, <laughs> with machine learning, um, like where do you figure out where it's just like, oh, okay, this is this is this is something we can solve with machine learning. This is something we, we need to solve in another way. This is so um, we what. Well, um, we are very lucky to have really top-notch engineers. I, one of the, um, when you start a new job, you have a lot of like, you know, there's things that you expect and things that you don't expect. One of the things that I was very surprised in a good way was uh, the quality of the engineers. Um, we have a, a really great team. Um, we, uh, even in, in, the, in the ML side, it's, it's highly proficient. It's like very, it's very academic. They, they, the, um, we share papers and uh, the things that are we're developing is they're really in the cutting edge. Um, so sometimes the question, the, 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 there is this feeling of like, oh, we can make anything, uh, which you know is obviously it's not true uh, because then you have to cut it up of like, okay, we have to invest in a feature that we know that it, it will get us there. So the name of the game of working with AI. Um, is is how we break up. Uh, so I say camera tracking and nerve and like volumetric. How we can the, in the, our way to volume full volumetric capture with one single click. Uh, how we break this uh, problem into smaller steps uh, that bring us a smaller 
subproducts in the in between in the way there um, because it's just uh, it's, 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 I, can, I guess this, this is a very boring answer in the sense of like we need to put the energy to, to take us there. Uh, we, we live how to like live um, we have to do it because at the end we are a finite number of people with a finite number of energy. We have to uh, make it fit. <laughs> um, that said, uh, that that said, uh, I think there is a second also problem, which is the and and I think this is way more interesting. I, that was my boring answer, and here it comes. But I feel it's like the real challenges. Um, I went. I went to Parsons. My MFA is in design and technology at Parsons, and um, I think there is a huge suborders of challenges. And and I think you you will understand this, but it comes from the UI. And I think and I have seen the same thing in o Oculus, for example, where like really our our childhood has been two D, and we have been kind of like absorbing reality and like telepresence through two D or audio. And now when we have to put it on a product that needs to fit kind of like everybody, <laughs> um, the challenge is how we, we are in this um, frontier where, where we don't have the right metaphors here and how we present that in a way that people, you know, the problems we have, for example, with VR, how you make uh, teleportation in a way that people doesn't get sick or uh, how you make UIs that are not 2D, but not 3D, and they are not weird things in between. Um, the same with volumetric of how, how, how we can put, okay, we can put, if we can have camera tracking, we can put 3D text. If we have put a 3D text, how we can make an interface to putting a 3D thing in a 2D thing uh, without, um, without scaring people. Uh, so, so sometimes, sometimes part of that breaking is okay. We have to. It's not just the engineering problem behind it. It's also the design of like how our in our, our is our interface prepared for three D yet or not? Um, which uh, I think is another. Is um, uh, for me, it's very exciting to to kind of like have this kind of like thick multi layer problems because. Uh, um, because well, I don't know, this is, this is this is kind of like the rock and roll of our, our careers, right? Mm -hmm. um, the the I, I think one of the good things of, of the team is that everybody's kind of like a misfit. We are all we all have artistic careers. We all have some eye and some idea of interactions. All of us kind of like work with tools. So like I I don't know. I particularly like Blender. Other ones people come from Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe, kind of like typical um, uh, tools, other ones that are more in the coloring side of like video production. So, um, so I think everybody has a little bit of multiple uh, hacks and the conversations just around that is, 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 is fun mm -hmm. because everybody comes from different places and even the metaphors, I, I, when I joined and I was preparing this kind of like system to do all the modification and operations of the video. Most of the, every time that I was coming, coming conversations with the design team, everything was about layers. And that's, and I was like, oh, this is fascinating because the metaphors are like very like Photoshop and Illustrator. And videos works in a different way because you have another, you have another dimension, right? Um, so um, it became really fast that for me, uh, it was fascinating how the the, the challenges was all, always around the metaphors that we use to create the interfaces, and I think that that's um, you know it's it's almost it's kind of like the philosophy of uh, our field. It's like we are creating the building blocks in order to hold the, the thing that we're trying to create. Uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry. I hope I did. I answer your question. Sure. That's. I mean, oh, yeah. and, and you also like made me think of like a hundred more, but but as you've been talking, other questions have been popping up and I want to make sure that other people get a chance as well. It's so funny you mentioned the metaphors though, because I mean, part of part of the, my challenge in trying to take something, you know, even even like the volumetric capture stuff and explain it to game designers is that they're, they're like, the metaphors are totally different. The games are all animated. And then working with these things that are like half, and they're like half animated and half 2D and half 3D. 
and you know have video and then trying to find like a language to talk and like metaphors to talk about them and to work with them that actually makes sense to people who come in from like all of these different areas is yeah it's a um it's a it's a huge a huge challenge um it is yeah i um with volumetric capture like back when i was a student um I, I came to Parsons through basically through the Open Frameworks community, and I, there I met uh, James George. Um, he and now is the CEO of Scatter, uh, but he was working in this documentary called Clouds, and he invited me to be part of it. And I was I I I, I, I it was the first time that I was kind of like running into this kind of like situation where we're like, okay, we're making a documentary, and so everything was like a talking head kind of documentary. Mm -hmm. And we were very excited about the technology and the volumetric aspect, but it was incredibly boring. Um, so we had to come up with like, oh, how we can like, you know, um, the transitions and how, all of these things that in a regular documentary has of like, you know, um, you, the camera goes into the eyes or like, like pans out or like switch sides. But okay, but we, we cannot be pulling that is in VR, pulling people around you because they're going <laughs> to... <laughs> they're going to be very uncomfortable um, and how we can kind of like put kind of like a b-roll into it um, so one of the one of the products projects that I have inside that documentary was kind of like making the visual systems which was pretty much um, everything also like the documentary was about our like the credit coding scene um, so everything was very abstract how we can like bring some visual uh, components that kind of anchor these like very abstract things that people is saying. Um, yeah, I, I feel, um, I think it's very excited with the field because um, all those things are kind of new and our first reaction is exactly what, what I was telling you about the, the layers with the design team. It's kind of like, we, we, we immediately go to the things that we're familiar with. Um, and here we have an opportunity, I don't know, sorry. Yeah, we have a whole bunch of, yeah, a whole bunch of new things. Yes. Uh, so we have um, three questions uh, now. We have two. We have two from the Q and A. So it, so the question order, as far as I've been able to track it, is Christina and then Arsh and then Nick. Uh, I'm going to see if I can um, uh, do this answered live question. Um, actually, Christina, would you be? Um, would you want to ask your question? Hi, Christina. Oh wait, you can hear me. Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, thanks for sharing. Uh, my question was just about um, like the video editing part of Runway and also like ML Lab. And um, I was just wondering like um, if Runway is like focus um, in like the upcoming months and stuff is like more on like building like the video editing features and um, like kind of like what the if I can ask like what the product roadmap is looking like in the future and like for both like ML Lab and um, SQL, if that makes sense. Yes, that, that makes total sense. And it's a great question that we get a lot. Um, so all, you were totally right. All, all the energy, all hands on decks are in the video editor at the moment. Um, the, the ML Labs um, is very successful, is very useful in academic, um, the, we at the moment there is not more development put into it. Uh, we're maintaining it. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be keep being access. People can access it and use it. Um, but kind of like the focus is, is we are all focused trying to keep focus on making the video editor. Just because, and this is talk, talking about previous metaphors. Um, one of the first things that we need to do is kind of like make it a fully feature video editor and. Uh, video editors have been present for a while. So there's a lot of things that we need to bring back from regular video editors, like transitions, um, tracking, uh, blending modes, um, uh, um, tools to do motion cap uh, to motion graphics, text, uh, shapes, um, be able to drop animations from other places. That, so there is a, there's a big, list kind of like a big laundry list that we need to check all the boxes so from our resources so in, again with the boring hat from a resources point of view we are kind of like fully 
we, we are working with fully featured the the thing but then uh because we're runway uh we are working on very uh exciting uh um, um kind of magical tools um there are the I, I would say uh stay stay tuned because there, there is a pretty big one that is coming soon uh which we are very excited about um i i guess i cannot say much more than that um <laughs> sorry for that uh but in terms of uh magic and the magicness and, and ml um we are a company that really listens to their, their their people um and especially in this moment and um i cannot encourage more of like get in contact with us. Uh, if you have a project, if you know other people, if you work in the field, and we are running all the time uh, interviews with users. Um, so if there is something that can change your life, um, I, will, I will go and ask for it. Um, one, one of the, and this is going back to the metaphors. Um, one of the things that we have is that people tend to ask for things that they already so in another application, so we somebody will be like ask like we want transitions, right? Um, but here, and and I think having uh, having uh, having uh, uh, an audience uh, 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 working with a community such a technical te technical and uh, uh, rich like ours that is focusing on storytelling and innovative ways of like telling stories and knows kind of like the nitty gritty and the back end. Um, that is huge because um, because I personally I wish people were more like oh um, there's there's all these way regular ways of doing transitions like front to back and they like left to right and like sliding or like cutting but nobody's asking for things of like oh what about making transitions in 3D or with volumetric data like how how like a, a scene can be blended using optical flow and movement. Um, and people is not asking for that because this is a metaphor that is outside of what already exists. Um, so I think the best way to get like to, um, I, think, I think there is an opportunity for everybody, especially for our kind of people <laughs> to chip in and say like, like um, I really need to do transitions here. Yeah from back or from the back to the front or to um transform some people using the, the velocity i don't know this yeah yes I ask for things that doesn't exist exactly <laughs> all right i am uh going uh, to the next question which is from uh Arsh. hi patricia Thank you so much for the amazing presentation. I really enjoyed it. Um, oh, you. you know, generally, I'm really grateful for a tool like Runway that provides access to a larger audience and they can try using AI powered networks without going through technical difficulties. Um, and I like what you answered to, to the, the, the last question somehow answers my question to some extent. But uh, since you're working with the amazing team in Runway, uh, I, I would love to know your take on the type of networks that somehow don't fit into already existing workflows. Like I totally understand from a user experience perspective, how popular can a video editing tools become because it, those magical networks now fit into an already existing workflow that people are familiar with. But there are also those amazing networks that somehow don't like more generative models. And what, how do you see the future of those models? Like StyleGen family in general, now more recently, uh, these uh, um, uh, guided diffusion models uh, that somehow introduce a totally new workflow. And somehow I find people having uh, challenges wrapping their heads around how it works because that's that's a totally new way of thinking. Uh, do you think that has a future or we essentially will need to wait until these networks 
um, uh, get integrated into some sort of uh, uh, familiar workflow that people work with nowadays? Uh, that's a great answer, a uh, question. I, 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 I think I'm, I'm, if I understand it correctly, I think I'm a little bias at it. Um, I'm, uh, I, I don't consider myself a huge uh, generali uh, gener generative ar artist. Um, I, um, and also I have a very strong kind of like technical hat. Um, so sometimes I get, ex the things that I get, I get excited about and not usually what everybody gets excited about. So sometimes, for example, going to volumetric, like I'm very excited about volumetric because I love 3D and like it's kind of my space. Um, I think the challenges for a company, for a product like Runway, and this is going to the idea of the networks and any with any particular network or direction in particular is how how the people is going to use it. Um, so so when it comes to models, there's a lot of there's a lot of wonderful things that can be done. The question is how much, what is the demand, and how is going to be used. Um, so um, I remember when um, in a previous life I was uh, working with Spark AR, and they, they after a lot of trouble they incorporated some models and they were all style guide, style guide and uh, they appear as filters as in the same category of the sh of the shaders. Like some these looks like like the, you know the typical. This looks like the wave. Or this looks like Van Gogh, or I, th I think there's another one that is like it's always the the, 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 the same ones, and um, and for the eyes of the general public, um, that 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 the interest around that is not probably the one of like us that uh, those things are are hard to achieve. So uh, if I had like if I had to explain it to I don't know to a cast like an um, uncle in Christmas, why um, making something look like the wave is so interesting. Um, he will not find it so interesting and useful for his case, especially for expressing himself. Um, so so I, think, I think those models that are, are um, that probably are gonna kind of like break the excitement of our community and make it more in the general public are those ones that can adapt to um, be used in expressive ways for a bigger audience. Um, but this is my takeaway, and this is with my all my BSF. Um, I think they're great, like things like Mid Journey or Dale uh, 2 are very interesting because they seem to have this flexibility where you can like remove something and ask something in return. So, so allow us more for a back and forth and a communication with the machine. Going back to Su Wen, um, the inputs and the outputs to this machine that we're collaborating with these like robots that fill our spaces. And um, that, that seems that I think those ones that allows for a bigger stream of information back and forth, um, I think are gonna be naturally more successful because they're gonna be more flexible to kind of like interact with a bigger audience. Um, while those ones that are, are like very magical, but they tend to like, I don't know, going back to like, you know, the puppets, the, the puppies, the, the first deep dreams ones. Um, if everything looks like a, like a, something between a muffin and a puppy, um, that is a very narrow kind of like way of communicating with this. And, 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 and although it's fantastic and revolutionizing, I don't know how much in the bigger, uh, spectrum of like regular people. Um, um, work, working with um, bigger companies, like I, I saw a little bit of what the importance of like pop culture and how much uh, from tech you can like if you can if you if you can create a um, a, a bridges to pop culture. And let and because there's where the, like more diverse voices are right. Um, that 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 it will enrich our field and 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 I think those uh, models have more success. I hope this is answering your question. <laughs> awesome! Yeah, yeah. Totally. Oh. 
Thank you so much. No, thank thank you. Thank you. What's that great question? I think yeah, everything, yeah. I I tend to go to the in dungeon. So um I was checking that I was. Um, Do we have time to sneak in one last question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have I have um I have I have all the time. Okay. I am gonna turn the mic over to Nick Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, so um yeah, I think, you know, my question builds a bit on, on some of the things you've already been talking about, but I'm, you know, I'm curious, um, because, you know, you're someone who's sort of sit on both sides of this, where you've been on the, you know, very much on the developer side of things, but then now um, translating that obviously over to a much more sort of user facing tool set. Um, I'm curious how you, how you look to find the sort of sweet spot of, you know, when you make these really powerful things, like easy. <laughs> You know, versus um, uh, balancing that out with like how giving people where it's a bit more work, but the kind of overall understanding of the why, right? So I think as the tools get more powerful, I think it's always more interesting to me to think about like, um, does it matter if they know why this is happening, right? Like, is that important? And I'm curious, you know, where, how you kind of calibrate that moment in between making things easy, um, and you know, having people have a kind of broader understanding of, wait, what is going on here to make this work on screen? Yeah, I am. So that's a great question, and uh, it's, it's 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 not an easy answer to give because um, I understand the problems, but also I I'm very I'm gonna put it this way. I'm very lucky to work in collaboration with uh, with other people. Um, I'm I'm not a great UI designer. I'm not, I'm not a great designer. I understand and like and we can talk about that. But where my heart is, um, it's a it's a weird place. If you see my tools, uh, they are very technical. They they have almost no UI. They are cryptic. Um, some of them are like yeah, they are cryptic and esoteric. Um, so um, so in my preference, in my in my, and I think that's where like. Uh, I separate kind of like my practice where my heart is as an artist and then the professional side. Um, and I think, uh, although I am very lucky because I, 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 the distance between those two is, is very close. Um, for me, when I'm working on a tool for myself, um, it's, that's, that's, a, that's a very clear, um, uh, that's a very clear contract with myself of like, oh, here is a place where I'm gonna have fun on my way. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this kind of like um, for my workflows that are very particular and the way that I want to be iterating. Um, and and I don't advertise them as like being one click of a solution because I know that they're not. And I and I'm very grateful. And this is this is where I. Become very grateful that I work with a team of people that is willing to uh, to take that question of how we make this easy all the way. Um, I feel that uh, I I feel that there's this that that distance between the tool and the interface. Um, I I understand that's that's a big challenge. And, and I think it's a challenge worth taking. Uh, I think there's great success stories um, where uh, very complicated things are made easy um, without stop being uh, powerful. I think, I think Runway got one of those, some of those very right. Uh, um, in, then, Especially in my more in my field, for example, um, node node pro, uh, graphic uh, programming through nodes is kind of like becoming the standard. And, um, and for me, it's always very it's kind of like a very uh, it's a hot topic because yes, I know that that's the way. I know that that's how you make it easy. I know that that's how like most people uh, access to technology. Um, so blend programs like Blender or uh, Maxim P, um, Design, uh, Touch Designer, um, everybody uh, now Unity, um, Blue um, Blueprints in, in Unreal, everything is going that way, and 
And I think that metaphor is really, you can really sustain it of like, okay, this is being proven that this is, this is, this gives, this gives for most of the audience what they need. Um, I, when it comes to me, I prefer to code it, but that's, that's because I'm, but I think that that's the part where you have to be honest of like, oh, this is, this is Patricia talking because I'm a weirdo. <laughs> and, 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 and that's where like you can be professional by like saying, oh yeah, yeah, definitely graphic programming is the way to go. Uh, I don't use it, but because I don't, it's like if I don't because I don't wear hats, doesn't mean that hats are not useful. <laughs> I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, it does. I mean, I think I yeah, I can appreciate that it's obviously like an ongoing conversation, but I think that um, that definitely answers it, and I think that's that's a really good take on it. But but I I, I think. If I understand correctly, on in the core of your question is this balance of powerness and flexibility and easiness, right? Yeah, exactly. Because it's I, I think it's like, and I think your point is correct. Is that question is different depending on what you're doing, which I think is a is a, is a good way to look at it, right? It like uh, yeah, the tools what you're using them for isn't um, in a vacuum either, right? So I think that that's probably a, a good strategy. I if if. And, and this is going to expose what kind of nerd I am. Um, I, I really like the par paradigms that kind of like um, allows for multiple, for approaching the same problem with, uh, with from multiple parts. Um, for example, um, I, I think uh, Unix and Linux operating system has that kind of like philosophy of like, oh, you can work to everything from the terminal. It's going to be a horrible person experience. Like, uh, 0 0.01 percent of the global population will have a good time there and like understand the power of it. Um, but like, if you need to use that, you need to put on top like all all the graphical features and needs to be up to date and needs to be like from this century. <laughs> um, so um, I, I think um, I, I think there if you see in tools. Um, I like to see when when tools have this. Oh, you can use the graph, or you can like you can do the code, and 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 I like when you see that there is love in both at both ends. Like bringing the metaphor of Blender. Blender has is all building up around nodes now, but um, the API is still very very um, is is um, is. is is very powerful and that kind of like fits into the technical community that wants to be developing add-ons for that. So I, I feel that there's um, that there's some reasons to do that. That is smart for the users and for the kind of like the com community and ecosystem around it. Um, and through that, you kind of like can still make something that is very powerful for most of the people uh, and then let those people also contribute to make it more powerful and simple. Um, I think I think there is, yeah, it's a long conversation and it depends specifically on the project, but um, the, there are opportunities there of like creating like nice um, um, cycles. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Nick, for the question. This has been a wonderful conversation. And I'm gonna draw it to a close, but please know that we could we could probably keep keep going for, for ages. Um, I also I also would like to point out that, that part of our core principles is for this like DF conversation series is outing people as huge nerds. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for playing along. Uh, uh, and uh, I am, it, <laughs> but um, yeah uh, Thank you again for um, for uh, sharing uh, sharing with us today, uh, for uh, for kind of answering our questions and uh, and just being here and getting us excited about uh, about working with, with these kinds of tools. Um, this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you, uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, thank you for the questions. Uh, and yeah, um, the yeah we. Um, we, we are in a small community. So um, if you, if, if we cross path, and I'm saying this to everybody, <laughs> uh, if we cross path, don't be a stranger. And um, we, we are here all in the long run of um, being in the same field at the same moment on time. Uh, and we have all the opportunity to learn from each other. So um, yeah, don't, don't fear to reach.
That's great. All right. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody um, who's, uh, who's been here attending. Uh, and I will, uh, uh, the sun has come out here in Toronto and hopefully it's, it's a nice day where you are and uh, yes. have a, a wonderful weekend. Okay. Thank, thank you. Take care. Bye -bye. Take care.